Here is a, uh, a Neiman print. We were very lucky to have had, um, and I had everything right here, um, a small number of remainders of Leroy Neiman's work uh, come into us, uh, the iconic work on Lincoln. Every generation needs a new biography of Abraham Lincoln to relate to its times and problems. So too do we need a new view of the man. Back in 1962, Ralph Newman and his friend Bernie Sleepak commissioned Leroy Neiman to produce a new Lincoln. After carefully examining a collection of Lincoln photographs, Neiman became enthusiastic, producing this compelling Lincoln image. As with his well-known and collectible sports paintings, Mr. Neiman portrays an act of Lincoln, capturing Lincoln's spirit in riotous color. Yet, the image has a true 19th century feel to it, being reminiscent of Anthony Berger's photograph taken in Matthew Brady's Washington Gallery on 9 February 1864. The original was displayed on loan at our bookshop when I first arrived here in 1971, and just four years ago was sold by Mr. Sleepak shortly before his death to the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Museum. An enlargement of Neiman's Lincoln image was chosen to be the backdrop for the Lincoln Bicentennial Banquet in Springfield last February 12th. The photograph of President Obama standing before it has become a powerful illustration shown worldwide. In 1968, the oil was reproduced by serigraph on a finely embossed heavyweight paper stock suitable for framing. 26 screens were meticulously hand cut and each color individually applied to faithfully capture the tonal values in the original work. In fact, this layering has produced a print that mimics an oil painting. And we've been fortunate enough to obtain a very small remainder that was left by Mr. Sleepak's estate, each signed and numbered and coming in its original protective wrapper. And they're $3,650 each and available only while this small supply lasts. They're actually less than 10. And we also have a few, literally, out of series being signed but not numbered at $3,250. Shipping and insurance is additional. And if you enjoy this particular work, I think that you have a chance right now to be able to obtain uh, one of these while they last. Michael, we've put you to work here, and I appreciate your signing for everyone. Uh, and if uh, someone wants to come up with a list of names for me, I'll actually... Uh, I'll talk about that uh, as well. Um, we're going to go back to some of the questions that have come in. Uh, here is one that came in a little bit earlier that uh, I'm kind of interested in knowing as well. Uh, you and Harold Holzer disagree on Lincoln's approach to the peace con uh, convention at the Willard Hotel before his inauguration. Uh, Holzer says Lincoln did not influence the Illinois delegates' decision to support a compromise. You say Lincoln probably did to keep key border states in the Union. What does this behind-the-scenes effort before his inauguration tell us about his political skill in keeping border states from joining the Confederacy, and how important was his skill to the Union's ultimate victory? In well, brief. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not, I've, I've been pretty busy lately, um, uh, and I haven't had a chance to read Holzer's book, so I'm not sure um, what evidence he has. But um, the evidence that I've dug up as, as you mentioned earlier, a lot of the work I did was in newspapers. Um, and uh, historians of the Lincoln and the Civil War have almost exclusively used New York newspapers uh, on the not irrational assumption that New York newspapers had the largest budgets and therefore the biggest staffs and therefore the most comprehensive coverage of Washington events. But in fact, an awful lot of good information about Lincoln can be found in newspapers outside New York, uh, in Boston, uh, New, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Baltimore, uh, Chicago, Cincinnati, uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, um, Springfield, Massachusetts. The, these newspapers contain a great deal of information about Lincoln. Because, f stop to think for a minute, if an Ohio congressman or an Ohio general or an Ohio senator comes out of the White House after, spe after speaking to Lincoln, is he going to go talk to somebody in the New York Herald, the New York Times, the New York Tribune, the New York Post? No, he's going to go talk to his buddy on the Cincinnati Commercial or the Cleveland Plain Dealer or the Columbus, Ohio State Journal. So you've got to look through all those papers. And if you do, you find a great deal of new information. And I, I have been able to do a, a lot of 
work, but not as much as I had hoped to, and I hope someday to, to publish a book called Re uh, Words of Abraham Lincoln as Reported in Contemporary Newspapers. Um, and I, I can't recall off the top of my head specifically whether it was newspaper sources that I had that led me to believe that Lincoln in encouraged the Illinois delegates to the peace con uh, convention to switch their votes uh, to allow for some kind of compromise measure. Um, but it seemed to me that this was, this was uh, consistent with Lincoln in general, once he gets to Washington, trying to do what he could, short of acquiescing in secession, to avoid war. Uh, and the, the, um, the evidence for that, as I say, is, is uh, I, I can't recall right off the top of my head, but it does seem to me consistent with everything he did in Washington once he arrived, uh, between, the, between the time he arrived in Washington and the time that he delivered the first inaugural address. Uh, which we're going to try to get to, as I said, all of your uh, emails uh, as quickly as we can. Although I have, I'm going to get in front of you for a few general questions that I want to get to, too. Here are two on background and ancestry. Maybe you can. Sure. Uh, here's one that I'm always uh, asked, actually, or have been by even relatives. Uh, what are your thoughts on Lincoln having a Jewish background? That's one. <laughs> and Linda from Iowa asks, I've started reading your book and I'm curious why you don't mention Lincoln's grandmother, Bathsheba. Lincoln never forgot his Kentucky roots and the family is well documented in and around what is now Fort Knox. So on the two questions, Bathsheba and Jewish background? Well, I'm, I'm told that uh, uh, the Judge Maravitz was That's right. right. Yes, well, he was. Uh, his, his mother was convinced that Lincoln was Jewish because <coughs> she was told that Abraham was shot in the temple. And therefore, he must be Jewish. Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, he was shot in the back of the head, uh, but uh, close enough. <laughs> there's no evidence that I'm aware of that, that there's any Jewish uh, right. part of Lincoln's lineage. Um, uh, and as for, for Lincoln's grandmother, I do talk about her in the book um, and uh, about how uh, she raised Lincoln's father, uh, Thomas Lincoln. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information about her, but I do have some information about her. And I, I dug up a lot of new information about the Lincolns in Kentucky b uh, by going to the archives at the, uh, at the Filson Club in Louisville and to uh, Frankfurt and, and to uh, Lexington. Uh, and there's, there's, a, there's a lot to be... It was one of the startling things about this book, from, from my money, was every chapter I wrote, the 36 chapters, every time I started to draft a new chapter, I kept finding new stuff. That, that is, that, that there, was new th there were new things to say about every single aspect of Lincoln's life, every chronological chapter, uh, including Kentucky. And you would think that Kentucky had a very small corpus of information because he was only there from his birth to the age of seven. But there were, there were various kinds of information that, that were available. Some was here in Chicago at the University of Chicago, and a lot of it was down in Kentucky itself. But uh, I, I do want to, uh, now, the, now the indexer, uh, I, I didn't do my own index. <laughs> For, I thought, oh man. Um, and the indexer may have, may have inadvertently left her out, but she's there, trust me. Read chapter one closely. All right, very good. Um, my father was a psychoanalyst. And so I'm interested in, a, in the next few questions I'm going to ask. Uh, one is, how did Lincoln deal with his depression? Uh, I thought maybe it was his driving ambition that wouldn't allow him to commit suicide, even though knives were taken away from him once or twice, mm -hmm. uh, and scissors, but that he still wanted to do something on this mortal coil before he left it, and it was the ambition that got him through. What's your take on that? Well, he, he says something to that effect. Uh, Lincoln did suffer from depression uh, throughout life, uh, and, and particularly in his 20s. There were two episodes in his 20s where his friends were so concerned about his depression that they feared he would kill himself, and they removed sharp objects from his reach lest he do himself in. Um, and on both of those occasions, he, he was incapacitated for a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, what did pull him through, at least on one of those occasions, he says, uh, I, I would... Uh, I cannot leave this earth without having done something to, to um, have made life, my life here worthwhile, having done something constructive and creative. Um, and until I've done that, uh, I don't want to leave this earth. So, so I think you're right, that his ambition to do something memorable and worthwhile uh, kept him from doing himself in. How much has been made of the dreams that he's had? Ward Lamon even talked about that, not in the Holland book. Uh, and certainly death was on his mind quite a bit throughout his life. Uh, considering his fatalistic attitude, is it all that surprising that should, he should have uh, morbid present presentments 
And uh, tell us a bit about the dreams and what that may have meant to him well, and what it meant to you. Well, Lincoln, Lincoln did uh, uh, encounter death quite a lot uh, as, a, as a youngster. Uh, his mother dies when he's nine. Uh, and she dies tending her aunt and uncle, who were Lincoln's virtual grandparents. So he loses what were, in effect, his grandparents and his mother, all at the age of nine in the course of a, of, uh, a month or so. Um, then his baby brother is, dies in infancy, his younger brother. His older, his only other sibling, an older sister, dies in childbirth when Lincoln's an adolescent. Um, then his sweetheart, Ann Rutledge, dies when Lincoln uh, is in his 20s. Um, so, so he encountered a great deal of death early on. And it's my hypothesis that, that, that Lincoln's depressions were triggered by these deaths, that, that the death of his sweetheart reminded him unconsciously of the death of his mother and, and tended to plunge him into, into depression. Um, and as for, for Lincoln's dreams, um, first of all, there, there's a dream that he allegedly had, which he didn't have. <laughs> um, that is, he dreamed about his own death. That, that, he, that uh, the pre he, he allegedly said that I had this dream where I went to the White House and uh, went and saw that there was a coffin on a catafalque and I asked who it was and I was told it was the president. The source for that story is highly unreliable, so it probably didn't mm -hmm. happen. Lincoln does, however, have dreams. He says, uh, at a cabinet meeting, he says, I had a dream the other, this is toward the very end of the war, I had a dream the other night about a, uh, a, a ship moving, a vague, un indistinct ship moving swiftly across the water toward a vague, indistinct shore. And that I've had that dream uh, several times, and it's almost always before a great Union victory. Um, and then he cited the, the, the victories. Uh, and, and one of the victories he cited was Stone River. And, and <laughs> Grant was there and said, that wasn't much of a victory. If we had had more victories like that, we'd have lost the war. Uh, that was not Grant's battle, by the way. That was Rosecrans's battle. Um, uh, but he put it, he, Lincoln had a superstitious streak. He, he believed in portents. And uh, he was raised as a, uh, as a, as a, as a Baptist in, in a Calvinistic uh, and a, a pretty primitive uh, frontier environment in which superstition was rife. Uh, and so he, he remained superstitious, and he said he was superstitious, uh, uh, and believed in the power of dreams and portents, uh, even in his presidency.